Hey everyone, it's late at night and I'm Norman, so let us begin. Tonight I would like to tell briefly the story of how I went from a collection of 100% dive watches to a collection comprised nearly completely of dress watches. How did that happen? It all came down to one watch, one watch that completely changed uh, the course of my watch collecting journey. I first began collecting watches in earnest about five years ago. At that point in time, I was obsessed with all things nautical. I crewed on sailboat races, I read all the 1800s journals that the sailors had written, so of course I wanted to get a dive watch. So I bought a Citizen Pro Diver, and I loved that watch. I liked its modern styling, I liked its super domed crystal, it was a great watch. I liked it so much so, in fact that when I damaged the case pretty bad, I bought a second one just like it, uh, so I had a backup. And again, I knew nothing about watches. So when I decided that I wanted to get the quintessential dive watch, I had no idea what Rolex Submariners were. Um, so I ended up getting an SKX 007. And that was a great watch too. Uh, wearing it on the beach, it was perfect. It just looked awesome. Uh, I liked the beveled crystal. It was great. And I learned a little bit about what mechanical watches were. Before that I had no idea. But I decided that I wanted something a little bit bigger. And so the hunt was on again and I ended up finding the Armida A2. And again I had no idea what Rolex subbies were. And so I didn't realize that the style that I liked at that time was actually a vintage Rolex mill sub with the sword hands, the dot indices. The A2 was great. It was a great homage to that. And it was a larger, I think it was 42 millimeters, 41 or 42 millimeters. And so the dial had plenty of room. It had a lot of wrist presence. It was a really nice watch. I mean, it was, in spite of being Chinese with the Seiko movement in it, it really was a great watch. At this time, I finally became aware of Rolex subbies and a certain homage watch that was controversial, expensive, and yet one of the best homages out there. Of course, I'm talking about the Genoa Ocean Rover. I know all the controversy behind it. There's a reason that I sold it. But it was an amazing watch, and of course it was. Knowing what I know now, that how wouldn't it be? It was basically a replica. Now, I kept on seeing Marathon G-Sars come through my various feeds, and every single time I would see them, I would stop in my tracks. Something about it just called to me, even though it wasn't really a style that I was into at the time. So, I decided to get one. And to this day, that's the one watch that I'm really sad that I got rid of. I mean, I don't regret it. Um, I just didn't get a whole lot of wrist time because of something that happened to me about this time. My oldest son was about to graduate. And uh, being a budding watch nerd, I decided that I would get him a nice, inexpensive, just really nice dress watch. For a graduation present. I ended up getting him an Alessi, um, the model with the second hand that's perfectly balanced on both sides. It's actually really cool looking. And when it arrived, I opened it to make sure that everything was good. And when I saw that watch, I was amazed. It 
was so clean, so sleek, it just looked great. And so at that point, everything changed. I decided I needed to get myself a dress watch. And I ended up finding the Rosling & Co. Metropolitan, which had some great mid-century modern styling to it. But the date window with the white background just looked horrible on the black dial. And it was at this point that I started to dislike date complications in general. And nowadays, uh, oftentimes that's a deal breaker. I will keep on hunting to try and find something similar without a date before I go for something that does have a date. That and the rattling Miyota movement in the Rosling & Co, it just didn't work with a light dress watch. You could feel it wiggling, you could hear it. It sounded like a tin can scraping against itself. Uh, so that kind of uh, soured that watch to me and I ended up getting rid of that one. But my course had changed. And so now I'm on the hunt for classy, elegant, uh, vintage inspired dress watches and most of my collection now consists of dress watches and in future videos we'll take a tour through those watches and tell many more stories about them and about other watches that I've had and currently have and will have in the future thanks for watching mm -hmm.